So I have a question about 2030. So a lot of people are predicting uh, a transition. 50% EVs will be sold in 2030, 50% ICE. And I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about what will be the volume that Tesla will be selling by 2030. I believe they've stated a goal of of what? 20 million? 20 million. Do you think now, looking at Elon's goals, maybe he truly wants to be at 9 million, 13 million, 15 million. And if he sets the goal at 20 and misses, he'll be leading the world in, in, in volume. I think it'll be more than Toyota. I think Toyota is like 10 million or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do you think, do you the, think it'll be a, a, yeah. a high goal and miss and still be great? Kind of like the timing for some of his stuff. What do you think? So I'm, I'm, I'm on the camp and I think this is sort of a small camp, but I really think 20 million by 2030 is legitimate. And, and the reason why sort of, I draw the parallel to what happened with the 500,000 units by 2020 that they laid out in 2014 that people thought was absolutely bananas. This was around the time they were making somewhere between 200 to 50,000 cars a year. And people are like, there's no way. That means a freaking 50% KGAR growth for the next six, seven years. No one else has ever done that. Lo and behold, they hit it. And that was completely mind blowing. So when it comes to large scale uh, manufacturing goals, it seems like Tesla has a track record to hit those goals, to, to hit those goals. Tesla is going to be selling into a fleet of cars that's about 1.4 billion cars large, where, where 97% of those are, are gas cars. And within that context, 20 million EVs sold to replace 1.4 billion gas cars is quite small still. So they have the TAM, the total addressable market to grow into. I think the compact car will be the biggest variable for them to get there, the sort of cheaper car. Um, and... and if we think about how Tesla is going to be building that car, it's going to be about what 50% the size and the cost of the Model 3, Model Y ish. And the footprint of the factory is going to be able to allow them to create two times more cars than uh, the existing 3Y. So that's, that's a 4X factor, right? Ish. So they'll be able to do four times the amount of cars out of one factory with a compact car versus a Model 3 and a Y which means that you need one fourth of the factories to create the same number of compact cars versus a Model 3 and a Model Y. And it's, if you put that uh, in, so in the, for the next few years, if you say, okay, how many more factories does Tesla need to, need to build to get to say 20 million capacity with those numbers in mind? That's five or six more factories. That's one factory a year that they have to announce and build. And they're on that. They're on that cadence. They announced Giga Mexico, which is supposed to break around here in the next uh, month or two. And then uh, as long as they announce at least one more factory per year, uh, why wouldn't they hit it, right? It, it just becomes a, a question of price. Are people going to be willing to pay whatever price uh, Tesla demands for that car? But they've made it very clear that their goal is to advance uh, sustainable EVs as much as humanly possible. So they're going to lead that effort quite strongly. Uh, so I think I think they'll get there. Worst case scenario, they'll reach 15 million, even 13 million, or even 10 million in 2030. But they'll hit 20 million not not long thereafter because they're still going to be on an exponential growth curve as they build out these factories for these compact cars. So that's how I think about it. You tell me if I'm bananas. Do you think I'm bananas, Corey? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say bananas. That makes sense to me. And it's just, you look at the macroeconomic scenario. So we have to avoid a long-term major recession, Sure. any major wars. You know, there could be things that, what do they call a black swan event that we don't know of, mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. if things stay rather stable, actually, I prefer we go into a recession and get out of it because we've been in limbo for a while, just so we can yep. get moving past that. Um, so barring any of that, I, I see 13 million, uh, 11 to 13 million on the low end. Like I'd be disappointed, but that would make sense to me. And the manufacturing ramp up for this small vehicle and the, the demand globally, that's kind of the wild card. But I think they're set up to to win that battle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think how that car progresses 
and how that car ramps from say it producing the first car uh, until 2027 will give us a good idea if 20 million is actually legitimately uh, a, a target that Tesla is going to reach. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to hear your take. It's good to hear your take. I, 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 I agree. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. And do the math on 20 million. So 20 million vehicles, the average sale price will probably drop because the compact car will be cheaper so I think that even though the compact car could sell for 25000 I think the average configuration will sell in the low 30s because people will probably buy higher-end yeah. features. Some would be FSD, all sorts of make different paint colors and seats, you know, whatever. Then you'll introduce the Cybertruck, which will be more expensive. So I think the average sale price, the average uh, vehicle price, probably low 40s, mid 40s, low 40s. Mm-hmm. It'll come down, I believe. So do the math on that, Eric. You got a calculator? You sitting over there? What's twenty million times, let's say, forty five thousand? Uh, what is that? Uh, a trillion dollars? Uh, nine hundred billion? I think it's nine hundred billion. So it's, it's a lot of money. <laughs> I'm asking him to do the math. Forty five thousand times two million? Nine hundred billion? Yeah, that's nine hundred. Yeah, almost a trillion dollars. Yeah. So that's a prediction I will make. I think Tesla will be the first trillion dollar revenue oh yeah i'll say that yeah hey, are you including full self-driving revenue in that yeah that's everything okay yeah because okay. they're they're at what uh 75 billion so they're at you know 0. 0.075 trillion not yep. even 0. 0.1 trillion look at that we're talking in trillions yep. now yeah, <laughs> big numbers, big numbers. I really do think I think Tesla's sort of long term sh- advantage, and I would love to get your take on this because I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, I think uh, in the EV market, Tesla, maybe BYD, and a few others are really going to control what what we would call the affordable sort of down market segment, where they're going to be able to create really affordable cars for the population. And then the higher price brackets are going to be controlled by, say, your traditional legacy automakers, you know, at the higher price bracket. BMW, Mercedes, Audi. Yeah. How do you think about that? Well, I think the the survivability of the premium brands is very easy. So whether that's a hypercar or a luxury car, that's a small percentage of the population that did will want to differentiate themselves from a brand for the masses. So Tesla is a premium car now, right? They're called a, they're they're like a luxury vehicle in most instances based on their price and their class and their size, especially the Model S and the X and even the Y at the high end. But if you introduce this compact car, there it's more the Model T. You know, think about it. It's the it's the vehicle that everyone should and can be able to afford. And I think you'll see people in the premium market want to differentiate themselves buying, you know, other vehicles. Even if a Tesla is a better vehicle, they'll want to buy the BMW 7 Series or a Mercedes S550 or whatever the the equivalent large vehicle is. So um, to answer your question, I think the luxury traditional players will be fine. But VW, Ford, and General Motors – They are essentially brands for the masses. Now, yes, Ford has Lincoln. GM has GMC, the Denali series, and they have Cadillac. um, And, um, you know, so those higher-end brands can offer these, but they're typically variations off of their core core models. Like a lot of the Cadillacs are, some of the Cadillacs are derivatives of the lower-end models where they have, you know, a GMC or a Chevy off of the same platform. And um, so it'll be interesting, but I think the luxury end will be fine. But if you're the VWs of the world and and you can't make a competitive product to compete with that low-cost uh, Tesla, it it could mean major contraction for that company. Yeah, right. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Some of the Verbiage out of Jim Farley at the uh, quarterly one, uh, the quarter one earnings report was sort of alluding to this, where you know they kind of talked about growth at all costs is not going to be part of the EV strategy for Ford, 
which kind of tells me that, hey, so maybe, I mean, they're making negative 102% margin on their EVs, and I would understand why that wouldn't be. I mean, they're already losing money on the car. They can't afford really to win on price. They have to win on, on some other measure until they can get their scale up to be able to produce uh, EVs in a mass market manner. But how long is that going to take? And what are the demands from the public? Yeah. And is Ford going to be aligned to be able to do that? Right. It's com it's such a complex situation. It's it's just feels so transitional in yeah. nature. Are you familiar with the Netflix blockbuster story about how mm -mm. Blockbuster had a meeting with Netflix? I think Reed Hastings early on. And oh yeah, yeah. So Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix for some small yeah. amount. I think it was two million or twenty million, something like that. And they essentially laughed. They they like laughed them out of the out of the room. And now Netflix is a behemoth, and Blockbuster yeah. is gone. I said, so will there be? Has that Blockbuster moment already happened? You know, so back when Tesla was tiny, the large OEMs just dismissed them. Nah, not a player, irrelevant. Don't care. Not a player, irrelevant. Too small. Blah. You know. And now it's to the point where it's reached that Netflix momentum. And it's like, do you think Tesla, so my question for you, do you think Tesla will reach the point where they could actually buy a small OEM, uh, buy a traditional OEM, you know, or, 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 you know, to take over that? Yeah, I think, I think they'll, they'll definitely get to that point. Them wanting to do it is a completely different question because then that means taking on all those assets, right, that are kind of obsolete. But yeah, I 100% think that's going to be the case. I mean, it's the innovator's dilemma. It's the innovator's dilemma to a T. It's it's Xerox, Nokia, Blockbuster, BlackBerry. You go down the list of all these giant players in in the business corporate world that were disrupted out of existence. And um, I think for some automakers, the momentum is too... It, it, we're too far into the game for them to be able to reverse course. Um, you know, I, 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 I can make my predictions on who those automakers are going to be, but I, I don't want to because I want, I want to make sure that, that you know, I, I'm rooting for them to succeed. I, I want as many EV makers as humanly possible. But if you're not, if you don't have the right uh, chips in place, if you're not making the right bets now, it's going to be too late. It, it, it were too far down the path for for these guys to decide to get into the game. So if and, and Sandy talks about this often, you know, and this is Tansy, Sandy's one of the ones that really has explained this phenomena beautifully is if, if you're starting now, you're too late. You're too late. Uh, if and if you're not far ahead enough in the game today where you can at least rival Tesla in the mid segment in some way with meaningful volume, you're probably too late as well but you could still uh, make some headway by taking some large bets and hoping that you have a product line that resonates with the consumer and offers the technology that the customer is going to demand in the in this decade which is going to be heavily geared towards software and autonomy so if you can't do that then you might be in trouble as well so yeah we'll see man it's they'll, they'll definitely be able to buy them but i don't know if they, they'll want to <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, it's an exciting time to be to to be covering all of these transitions and all these companies. Yeah, for sure. And I think the next probably decade will be wildly entertaining as we see the rise and the fall of of different companies and and uh, it's really exciting to be alive right now.